Today we're back with the baby Bronco. We've got a Ford Bronco Sport Badlands for you this week. I've put quite a few miles on this, spent a few days behind the wheel, and I wanted to give you guys an idea of what it's been like to live with this new Bronco Sport Badlands. This is a slightly more off-road focused Bronco Sport than the standard one. Of course, this is not the big body on frame Bronco that's coming out later this year. This is the Ford Escape based off-road rugged crossover. And to further prove that point, we've got some pretty gnarly all-terrain tires. These are 29-inch diameter Falcon Wild Peak 83Ws, which is kind of a KO2 competitor. It's a pretty beefy, gnarly off-road tire. And uh, good on Ford for putting a 29-inch tire on a unibody crossover. This actually has some pretty legitimate off-road capability. You've got a locking clutch type rear differential, full-time all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive. You guys have probably seen some off-road videos on the Bronco Sport from when it launched, and it's actually pretty capable. The thing I like about this is that you've got a good amount of cargo space, a good amount of size. This isn't a massive SUV, but it still gives you a nice trunk area. You can fit a couple mountain bikes back here, take the front wheels off, mount the forks on something, and you're pretty much set. Of course, you've got a full-size spare tire back there, and those seats fold down really easily to give you a nice, a, a nice flat loading floor. You've got this rubberized kind of rugged material here that'll do pretty well. A 110 outlet in the back, another 12-volt charger, and of course, lots of little Easter eggs plastered throughout. You've got a bottle opener here, a little lasso on these hooks in the window. You've got a little Bronco right there just chilling. Pretty neat. You can also open just the rear glass, which is very nice if you just need to like reach in for something or what have you. You usually see that on Lexus GXs or Range Rovers. Let's unlock this first here. Back seats seem a little bit cramped, but once you get in them, they're not as bad as you think. There's a ton of headroom, and there's actually quite a bit of room underneath the front seats for your feet. So all said and done, it's pretty nice back here. I don't think I've been in a car in a really long time that has this much headroom. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, you've got another 110 volt outlet back here. These little zipper pockets that feel like the inside of your backpack, your camping backpack, some little uh, straps there to tie things. Good amount of storage space. The plastics, all the hard plastics throughout this interior are actually quite nice. Uh, they kind of remind me of like a, a nice DSLR camera or something like that. So let's hop up front, start this thing up, and talk a little bit about this powertrain because this has the two liter turbocharged four cylinder. It makes 250 horsepower and that's mated to an eight-speed automatic transmission. Ford's nailed the drivetrain on this. It's pretty quick uh, for a crossover. It's very fast for an off-roader. It still gets decent fuel economy, mid to low 20s. And um, yeah, I think it's a pretty good package. If you want the fast Bronco Sport, this is it. In my last video, the turbocharged three-cylinder got a lot of grief, but even that powertrain I think is perfectly acceptable. It's just that this really does pack a pretty good punch. So let's talk some more about this interior. So you've got these nice cloth seats. The bolstering on them isn't very good, but they're very comfortable. And of course they seem very nice and rugged and washable. And keeping on that theme, we have this very plastic washable steering wheel that I absolutely hate. It's my only complaint about the entire car this, in this, this week. This thing just, it just feels so cheap. It's kind of sticky. It's just, it, feels like a base model, you know, Mitsubishi Mirage wheel for like a $13,000 car. It's terrible. I hate it. Ford needs to change this as soon as possible. You get, a, you get like a kind of a faux vinyl rubberized material right here on the armrest. Let's put that on the steering wheel or something. You have to pay an extra $2,600 to get the leather package in this Bronco Sport. And I don't think there's a way to get just the leather steering wheel otherwise. And I don't want the leather package. I like these cloth seats. I would just want the leather steering wheel. Maybe you can do that as an option at the dealer later on, but um, it's fine. I mean, it's okay. You live with it. You learn to ignore it after a while. But the first thing I saw when I got into this car was this cheap plastic rubber steering wheel, 
and I was not about it. But everything else, I think it's great. There's some really cool storage space. All of the places to put your phone and store stuff is kind of floored by this rubberized, grippy coating. The ergonomics in here are absolutely fantastic. Every button and feature and thing that you need to turn on and turn off is super accessible. You've got your forward-facing camera right there, your auto stop start on and off, uh, your climate control is just buttons and knobs and dials. I even like this rotary shifter because you don't have to look down and see what gear or button you're pressing. It just works. Of course, down here you've got your all-terrain, go over any terrain mode dial. Uh, it feels like it's kind of the opposite direction that it should be, but it works. The drive modes don't really make that much of a difference. We'll talk about that once we get on the road. But uh, And of course, base audio system. We'll test that at the end of the video. We're going to do audio tests at the end of the video now. Uh, and if you guys want to stick around for it, great. If not, uh, thanks for watching. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, of course, all that good stuff. Uh, Ford's latest, I think this is the latest, Sync 3 or something. Sync 4, who knows? I can't keep up with it, but you've got that. It's kind of a cheap-looking screen on center directly ahead. The contrast is great, but at any angle, it seems to get a little bit faded. Uh, so not super impressed with that, but whatever. It's fine. Let's show you guys under the hood here, this 2-liter turbo, a double pull for that lever, which is very nice to pop the hood. You don't have to go hunting for anything over here. This 2-liter turbo, 250 horsepower, nice engine. I really, really like it paired to this 8-speed automatic. It drives great. They've done a really nice job tuning and calibrating this drivetrain. Finally, Ford has figured out how to make a transmission be smooth. You've got some little tow recovery hooks right here, which is great. And I believe there are some underbody bash plates under there too. You've got active grill flaps to increase aerodynamic efficiency. Of course, these, uh, these kind of bullet hole alloy wheels, which look like steel wheels, but they're aluminum. They're an optional extra, a little bit pricier. This is a $36,000 Bronco Sport Badlands, including destination and delivery and all that good stuff so it's a little bit pricey but you know there are a lot of incentives a lot of dealer markdowns ford employee pricing chances are you're not really gonna be paying that much money for one of these unless if you buy one like right now when it's a really hot item got a cool little reverse camera nice and high res good contrast there you go that works let's take this thing for a drive and see what it's like on the road before I forget, let's start with a horn test. <laughs> little wimpy, that's okay. Gotta be reminded that there is a bigger, beefier Bronco out there, and this is still the baby. Pretty quiet engine. No weird piped-in noises or anything like that. Seems like a pretty natural note for a two liter turbo doesn't sound amazing but it's pretty quiet and it really does pull well we're on our bumpy road section of our test drive and a lot of people have complained about the stiffness of the suspension and it's a little bit on the firm side but i don't think it's anything to really complain about that much it soaks up big bumps really well especially with these bigger all-terrain tires and uh, I think off-road you'd be just fine. On-road, it's, re it's reasonably comfortable for daily use. I haven't noticed any issues and, uh, on our terrible Michigan roads right now. Uh, I've been driving around for a few days, and I think it's fine. We have pretty nice visibility. I love this view over the hood. Those two humps make you feel like you're just in something a little bit more special than your average crossover. And that kind of goes into saying that this Bronco Sport almost splits the difference in how it drives between... It doesn't drive like a Ford Escape at all, actually. It drives more like a body-on-frame SUV. You get the all-terrain tires, you get that initial squish and tread squirm and sidewall rollover. And if you ignore the fact that this is a reasonably small vehicle... Um, it feels a lot bigger than it is, which I think is kind of cool. So it kind of splits the difference between unibody crossover and body-on-frame SUV, in my opinion. It just feels a little bit lighter, of course, 
and a little bit more nimble, but you do feel like you're in something off-roady, and uh, I think it makes it kind of fun to drive. It makes it kind of cool. It doesn't handle very well. The stability control is pretty invasive, but it still has a reasonably uh, lightweight feel and lightweight driving character. At speed, not a lot of wind noise. It's pretty quiet. No complaints there. Brake pedal feels good. Ride quality, like I said, I think is just fine. Very typical Ford turn signal sound there. Yeah, I, I do like this thing. I think it's a fun little crossover. And to just kind of give some overall thoughts on it, I think it hits a really good mark. Ford's done a really good job packaging this Bronco Sport. It's not a hardcore off-roader, but it's about as capable as it gets for a crossover these days. It's got a good amount of ground clearance. You've got some really nice all-terrain tires on here. I think it offers a pretty compelling drivetrain. Uh, the locking clutch type rear diff in this has pretty much all the capability you need. I mean, unless if you're rock crawling and really seeking out pretty intense off-road situations, this thing is gonna be just fine for you. It'll get you to your campsite. It'll get you to wherever you need to go. The ground clearance in here is perfectly acceptable. Um, I think this is a fun little off-roader. Of course, we're not gonna be able to test any of that today or this week. But once the trails open up, I think we can probably get out there and get some more time in one of these Bronco Sport Badlands editions and uh, see how it really does off-road. But there are also plenty of videos on YouTube that show its off-road capability. So I don't think you really have a whole lot to worry about with that. This is going to be a little bit nicer to drive than a big SUV. It's going to be more fuel efficient. It feels a little bit more nimble and lighter weight. One cool little uh, tidbit in this is... You get behind a car and it shows you on your following distance that there's a full-size Bronco in front of you. Just as a little reminder that you're not in the big Bronco. This is the baby Bronco. Cool little Easter egg. Cruise control operation is super easy. All your buttons, your lane, your steering assist, your uh, lane keep assist, everything is right here within reach and the systems work incredibly well. Uh, I'm not going to show you that on the highway right now, but uh, Ford does a really good job with their systems, and that's the same case here with this Bronco Sport. They've done a really nice job tuning this 8-speed automatic transmission. It holds gears really well. It's smooth, no rough shifts, no complaints there. So yeah, I'm a fan of this new Bronco Sport. I think it hits a really nice place in the marketplace. You know, you've, you've had the Toyota RAV4, you've had the Jeep Compass, and uh, I think the RAV4 has always been just, a, it's been kind of rugged and off-road focused, but I don't think they've taken it as far as they could have. And, uh, you know, you've, of course you've got the off-road version of the Jeep Compass, but it's nice to have this as an offering in the marketplace. And I think a lot of people will really enjoy these cars. I think this is a good little crossover, and I have enjoyed my week with it. So would definitely recommend a Bronco Sport to anyone who wants something that's just a little bit more fun and rugged than the standard crossover. Just try to get your hands on a leather steering wheel. All right, guys. Well, that's it for my driving impressions on this. If you want to see more on the sound system... Stay tuned. This bass audio system is actually pretty good. I like the way it sounds. They did a nice job with this. And uh, yeah, otherwise we'll be posting more videos to the Winding Road YouTube channel. And Charlie from Daily Motor will also be doing a couple of reviews on this Bronco Sport Badlands. So if you want to see more on this particular one, stay tuned on those channels. I think this is going to be a fun little car. And it looks good too. Look at, look at just the shape. Very Land Rover-like with a high roof. All right, let's get into the audio test and show you guys what it sounds like. Look at this animation when you first get in. 
<laughs> That's cool. All right, so we're already plugged into Apple CarPlay. Let's let it load. Give it just a sec. Go into our sound test playlist. As I said, pretty decent standard sound system in this Bronco Sport. It sounds great. Uh, no complaints there. I like it. Thanks again for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more on the other channels. We'll see you next time. Take care.